right, guys. We're out here, and we're going to give you lessons on how to cut down the 73 to 87 frame. On this model, unlike the 67 72, you don't have to take the cab off of them. You can cut them behind the cab right here within your 14 inches. I'm about to power wash this frame, and I'll lay it out, and you guys get to see all the layout before I cut it. And uh, back here, you got to remove the back brace right there. And as you can see, it already has holes from the factory right there that you can uh, move that brace to forward because they stamp them just like they stamped this short bed frame. They get and it stamps from the factory like that. So you move that brace forward and put bolts in it. And uh, like I said, a six inches, five and three quarter, six inches off the back, whatever you like to do. I like five and three quarter. Um, it's like five and seven eighths between the holes. On some trucks, some trucks are right on six. Some, are, you know, they're all about the same. You know, stamped from the factory, but um, 14 inches off the front. We will not be doing a straight cut on these frames. I do not like doing straight or angle. We will be doing a Z cut, and I'll show you how I lay that out and explain it to you guys. Also, you need to remove the oh four or five bolts down through here for the brake line, and then I cut the brake lines and uh personally i just put a union back in them they've always worked in good a compression fitting union and uh you or you can buy an aftermarket line another thing you will be needing to buy on 73 to 87 is a short bed tank the factory long bed tanks will not work they're too long after when you go to put your short bed on the truck we've been super busy out here model a really ain't got to touch it much got the heads at the machine shop you guys remember the 57? I got half the frame painted because I welded up all that. Now I'm trying to do four link for the rear. So then after I weld all that in, I'll paint the other half. And then I'll probably do touch-up paint everywhere. Going to get some tubular A-arms. We got the burn table in. And burn out. Anything I need for the shop. Been riding my Harley. It's nice here in Oklahoma. Springtime. We got a full full shop, though. We, You know, I got stuff everywhere. They're just packed in here and this guy brought me this one last night at believe it or not 11 o'clock at night coming from dallas he dropped it off it'll be getting cut down here this week also it's just a one i fit in real quick nice little truck it's gonna become a short bed and got the big big girl running out there in line six and it got it running just move around the yard it's a future ramp truck build got my 57 body on the back just for now my dually been debating on selling it i just can't get myself to do it right now this one's for sale for sure it needs to go down the road and this truck out here this guy uh awesome guy brought it all uh had it transported or brought by his buddy all the way from michigan did a great job of creating everything for me got it nice and in order really appreciate that and give him a shout out for that uh makes my job a lot easier bedsides are already off so yeah it's just really what we got going on and i got more outside the fence out back personals i just never got time for my personal stuff and, uh well i'll get back to laying this frame out and i'll be uh catch back up with you guys shortly all right guys well here's the layout on these frames up front you can see what i've done there's a four Z cut, leaving six inches overlap each way. It's about all you got in here between the mount and there to give you plenty of room to weld good. I mean, you could probably go another inch or two that way, but man, it, it really gets tough grinding and all that. So I just do a six inch. As you can see, you take out 14 inches right here is where you're going to take this out. Then you come over here. You're going to take out 14 here. And that will leave six here and six there. And that will leave it over and they will overlap each other. The overall measurement from that line to the very end line is 20. So pretty much all you do is lay out your 20 inch mark. I come from one inch from here and then go 20 inches. And then I come over here and I measure over, uh, I lay my middle line down first, half the frame. And then I come over here and 
I measure over six there and I measure over six here and then I just double check make sure there's 14 in there and 14 in there and you should be good and that's what you cut out as you can see I'll let you look at the layout for a minute and then on the back same thing the back's pretty simple cut six inches off I didn't write it on this one um, there's no re-welding or nothing so I really don't clean up the back that good it's just six inches or your five and seven eighths five and three quarter whatever you like um, also another thing you might want to do is for your bed holes uh, relocate those the same dimension forward as uh, you see I got the cross brace out of here cut all the rivets so over here in the floor I'll put it back in right here you got to cut that rivet out put a bolt back in there and then there's your other two holes right there to line everything back up there's two holes down there see right there so I'll get it all cut apart get it tacked back up you guys I'll let you guys see it all tacked and then we'll weld it and then we'll go over here on the burn table which I didn't always have a burn table so I usually cut it just out of 316 steel and make my own um, fish plate but now I got a burn table so I can just cut that out on the burn table real quick clean it up and I usually do about a seven inch fish plate on the inside make it look good and uh, I'll come back when it's tacked up then I'll weld it out and I'll grind the inside I grind the outside be a full pin weld and make sure I get a full pin in there um, I, I weld the outside then I grind it from the back side or you can weld the inside and grind it from the outside on the back side back to your weld a little bit not, don't go through your metal again but get pretty close to it and it'll burn itself in if you know how to weld uh, on that note don't take your truck down to a muffler shop or anything of that nature to have them weld your frame up like they people say and um, they got them little kits you can sell um man i've been a welder for you know 17 years did all code work and refineries pressure vessels acme code where you run a root pass in i know structure integrity real well and i could tell you from the muffler shops i've been to they would never weld my frame they, don't get me wrong the muffler guys they can weld pretty decent on your mufflers and it's a thinner thing but it's a lot it's a different nature this is your life right here you're driving down the road with so remember that take it to a competent welder that you know will weld your frame out right and do you a good job not a guy in welding school or anything like that don't get me wrong they'll get they'll make their way in this world i'm just saying take it to a guy that knows how to weld because you don't want your wife or your kid driving down the road with some guy's half-ass weld excuse my language that's just how i'm gonna put it i've been doing these trucks for a long time and i've seen i've cut over 100 in some of these trucks i don't even know how many i might be getting up in the 200s i don't even know but i'm gonna let you know i've seen it all different ways straight cut side cuts this is the best way for me i think to do i used to work for a semi company making um semi convert them over to four wheel drive semis and i used to cut the frames on them so i learned a lot there and that's when i was younger and uh before i went got in code shops and uh so like i said take it to somebody that knows how to weld or send it to me i got a facebook page it's called coyote customs and auto sales um my name's chad weichel my phone number is 918-752-5039 um and just get a hold of me now don't be calling me with the 100 questions on how to do your pickup that's why i'm making these instruction videos so people will have the knowledge to do it if you're a good welder put it that way i wouldn't be like i said i wouldn't if you're just learning the weld this ain't something you really want to be doing but this is how you cut your pickup i'll get back when it's tacked up i'm gonna quit rambling on and uh see you guys shortly all right here we are got it all cut out uh the pieces i need to remove you can see the only the leave is left in there should be six inches each way so go together like a puzzle i always clean them areas right there real good before i put the frame together that's where i'm gonna weld that fish plate in and i back weld first anyways i clean the outside just easier why it's split apart to do this uh around them edges right in here 
And back there, everyone knows a sharp edge was prone to crack out. So round them edges off. Here's what you should have laying in the floor after you're done. Your 14, like a Z, that's what they call it a Z cut. So once I get it tacked up, I'll be back with that video and uh, show you where we're at before we weld it. All right, guys, here it is all tacked up. Well, I back welded it, and that's what it should look like. And what I do is I run my grinder right in there after I back weld it and get almost all the way back to that weld again. That gives you a good groove to weld in. Pretty much ensures you get a full pin weld on this frame. And it's, you can grind the out. It's a lot easier to weld it from the back. So you can grind this outside. And then here in a minute, I'll be putting a fish plate on it. I'll show you the fish plate I use on these frames. And we'll weld it up and we'll chop off the six inches off at the back. And that's pretty much wrapping up how I do a cut down on one of these frames. So it's what you should be looking at. All right, guys, we're wrapping up this truck. So got to put the wiring in. Got to splice that brake line. Um, here's the frame finished product on the frame. Never know it after you paint it real nice and smooth. After you grind it. Uh, I always leave the weld on top. No one ever sees that. That's a, a good, I mean, why grind it down if no one sees it. Got my fish plates in the inside. Those are some leftovers. I'm about to be designing some of them on the burn table. They're going to look a little different, a little sharp, pointed, and have, probably have my logo in them. So I know what trucks I've done. Maybe see them in the future because I've seen a lot of trucks come back to me down the road for other work. Um, it's nice to have my logo on it but yeah here's uh the back use anchor bolts on those did the back brace got the back cut off on my six inches or five and three quarter so what i do um it's always worked out better especially doing bedside so i did this truck in a, a matter of a day and uh yeah, they look a lot shorter as a short bed they really do and uh like i said stick with z cuts uh, uh, this is the 14 inches up front with the 6 inches uh, overlap is only for 73 to 87. Now here on 67 to 72, I take 12 out of those frames and, tw uh, you know, 12 inch overlap and they'll, they'll come back together. That's one painted. Never really tell where I cut it, hardly. Different style fish plate I got in there. But yeah, so that took me about a day, like I said. That's the easy slash hard part. You better know how to weld. You uh, got to measure level. I measure the ground as a long bed, and I write my numbers up here and remeasure as a short bed. And get Stay pretty close in tolerance. I measure all four corners, like I said. Write down the numbers on the frame or somewhere. Um, so now we're on to the bed. The bed is a uh, quite a bit harder part as you see in my other videos. This truck only took me a day to disassemble it, take the bed off. Um, but them bedsides, they take you know, anywhere from three to five days and they're a pain in the butt. But I mean, what do you do? Uh, another thing I like to talk about is a dry shaft. Um, when I was younger, I used to cut these dry shafts. There's a lot of guys that still cut these dry shafts and they don't take them, have them rebalanced. They don't, you know all that so i just take it in it's cheap it's like 130 to 170 bucks you get a new carrier bearing you get a you know uh dry shaft cut and rebalanced so you ain't worrying about vibrations knocking out rear seals on your transmission every time you turn around um so yeah definitely highly recommend taking your dry shaft and having it done i use dry shafts at tulsa i'm out of oklahoma i live out by sand springs um if you guys are interested in me having me do your truck i have them come from all over the country no big deal on that um you know look me up on facebook coyote customs and auto sales my phone number is 918-752-5039 uh, please 
If you're serious, give me a call. Don't be calling me asking me questions. <laughs> Hate to say it like that, but it's just, you know, I'm a busy person. I got, you know, it's like going on 7 o'clock right now, and I'm just wrapping up for the day. And uh, so, so it's nice being with you guys today. If you like what you're seeing so far, follow and subscribe, because the next one I'll be doing, I'll be doing some videos cutting down to 67 to 72, doing the uh, bed, frame, you guys will see that process. I'm going to be getting this girl back on the road for the spring soon. That's my personal. There'll be some videos on this 57. Put, you know, ALS is a tight fit in the fit tri fives. Um, about to four length the rear. So if you like what you see, hit me up. Follow me. Subscribe. Maybe you'll learn a little bit. Maybe I'll learn a little bit. Uh, nice being with you guys. Talk to you later.